Hello everyone, it's Jimmy here and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to share with you all the Leica 28mm lenses. So why 28mm? Well, if you have noticed, 28mm has becoming more and more popular in these days in applications like street photography, weddings, and even portraits. Maybe thanks to our cell phones, which usually comes with about, I would say, 25 to 28mm wide-ish angle lens. And, and thanks also to cameras like the Leica Q, which comes with a 28 f1.7 Simulux lens. And that's probably why a lot of the street photographers these days are actually using the 28mm instead of the popular 35mm and even 50mm back in the days. And since the 28mm has become more and more popular, I thought it would be really great for me to, you know, just share with you the optical qualities, the fit and finish and handling of these different Leica 28mm lenses here. So you can pick your own 28mm based on your needs. Okay, so the four lenses here are the 28mm f1.4 Sublux, which is known for its very cinematic and very unique rendering. And in the middle here is the 28mm f2 Simicron, which is sort of your regular do-it-all like a lens, just like the 35 and 50 f2. The next one here is the 28mm Almeret f2.8. It's fairly popular among street photographers because, you know, if you're shooting on the street, you're usually zone focusing, so aperture might not be your priority. And in this case, this 28mm is very, very light, very, very small. And when you put it on like a rangefinder, it just feels at home. And last but not the least, is the 28mm Sumeron f5.6. Now, this is a very, very special lens that I've actually shared with you guys last year in my channel. This is definitely not comparable to the rest of these lenses. And in fact, this is one of the lenses in Leica's vintage lineup, along with the 51.2 Nuctilux, the 19mm thumb bar, and the recently released 35mm f1.4 steel rim. So it's definitely more of a specialty lens. And with that aperture, it's almost exclusively a daylight lens, but with the crazy low light performance of the recent Leica M camera, such as the Leica M11, you can actually use it indoors or after sunset, no problem. But um, based on its specs and price, I actually wouldn't recommend it as a first or only Leica 28mm lens. That's why today I'm gonna focus more on the rest of these three lenses here. So the first First part is the optical performance comparison in which I would use these three lenses to shoot in different scenarios, to shoot different objects from different distances and mostly at their wide open apertures so you can fully understand what are the differences, their characteristics and what they're good at shooting. Okay, so let's get started. All right, let's first take a look at a set of photos shot at about three meters from a tree wide open. First, the Simulux, and then the Simicron. Last but not the least, the Elmeret. And then we're gonna zoom into the center of the photo and check out the details. Wide open, the Simulux and the Simicron looks about the same in terms of sharpness, but the Simicron does have a little bit higher of contrast. And if we stop the Simulux down to f2.0, they look virtually identical. Zooming out, you'll see that the Sunlux is actually a little bit more contrasty and the color just pops a little bit more compared to the Sumicron. Now, the Elmeret wide open is about the same in terms of sharpness and contrast compared to Sumicron wide open. And if we stop all these three lenses down to f2.8, the Elmeret is a little bit less contrasty than the other two lenses. Zooming out, you'll notice that at this distance, when it comes to depth of field or bouquet, there simply isn't big enough of a difference, especially between the Simulux wide open versus the Sumicron. Next up, let's take a look at these three lenses at minimum focus distance. And there might be a more interesting story to tell here. First is the Simulux, then the Sumicron wide open, and then the Elmeret. Let's zoom in and take a look. Now, wide open, 
the Simulux exhibits that signature sort of dreamy look. And the background or bouquet is definitely smoother and a little bit more creamy when compared to the Summicron wide open. But if we stop it down to f2, then again, these two lenses are virtually identical. Now at f2.8, when the Elmeret is wide open and the other two lenses are stopped down, we see that the Similux is actually a little bit more contrasty than the other two lenses. Now let's take a look at all these lenses again at their wide open aperture. And here at minimum focus distance, we can clearly see the difference in rendering and bokeh quality, especially between the Similux and the Summicron. Next up, we're going to take a look at the performance of these three lenses at infinity. Now, upon first glance, they all exhibit some degree of vignette without post-processing, but that's normal. And here we're going to take a look at the optical performance of these three lenses in the center, in the mid-frame, and also in the corners. Now first, let's zoom into the center of the image. Okay, so this is the Simulux wide open. I would say it's already really, really sharp. And if we compare to the Summicron also at wide open, we see that they're about as sharp as each other with the Summicron has an upper hand in contrast. Now, if we stop the Simulux down to f2.0, then again, these two lenses perform very similarly, but I will give a slight edge to the Simulux here. Now at f2.8, all three lenses performed exceptionally well. And if there is a split hair difference, then I would say maybe the Elmrit is a tiny bit less sharp. Next up, let's take a look at the mid-frame performance of these three lenses. Now wide open, the Simulux again is a little bit less contrasty than the Summicron. But stopping it down completely solves the problem. At f2.8, again, all these three lenses performed virtually identical and they're all tech sharp. Finally, let's zoom into the very corner of the image and take a look at the performance there. Now wide open, the Similux really surprises me at how sharp it is already. And compared to the Summicron, again, it's a little bit less contrasty, but stopping it down really helps. Now at f2.8, all three lenses again perform exceptionally well, even in this extreme corners. Now let's take a look at these three lenses wide open again in the extreme corners and I think I won't be hesitant to use any of these and that just goes to show how good these wide angle like lenses are. Now the last test here in the series of tests is the purple fringing or chromatic aberration test. I have deliberately chosen this extremely difficult scene here just to magnify the purple fringing issue that you'll see. So this is strictly for testing purposes and you would not likely encounter this heavy of a chromatic aberration in your daily use. Now let's zoom in and take a look. Now at the first glance you'll be thinking the leftmost image on the Simulux looks really bad. But bear in mind even the 50mm Apple Summicron would also show some degree of purple fringing under such condition. But here we can clearly see that um, the Simulux exhibits the most amount of purple fringing and Elmerit the least. And if we stop the Simulux down to f2.0 and compare it to the Summicron, we actually still see a little bit more purple fringing on the Simulux. This trend continues at f2.8 while the other two lenses are almost identical here. All right, so what do you think? Well, actually for me, I think the 28mm Elmerit f2.8 performed exceptionally well compared to its big brothers. Um, I was actually quite surprised that um, even stopped down, the 28mm Simulux actually showed quite a bit more purple fringing. I mean, chromatic aberration has always been an issue for lenses with large apertures. But nonetheless, I still really, really like the sort of wide angle, large aperture, shallow depth of field sort of characteristics of this Simulux lens. Under the right conditions, it creates some of the most magical pictures. The 28mm f2, like I said in the beginning of the video, it's a do-it-all lens. 
if you're only gonna own one this is probably the best choice because even though the f2 aperture compared to the f2.8 doesn't give you that much more of a separation i mean with the 28 mil in general you usually need a little bit of distance between subject and background to create that separation and okay but um, the f2 nonetheless is um, still a little bit more capable in the dark it handles quite similar to the 28 mil f2.8 i would say like their size are actually quite similar if you leave the lens hood on so you're not sacrificing on the size side that much and you're basically paying more for the extra stop of light well that being said my favorite lens here is probably still the 28 mil Almeret f2.8. This is just such a little gem of a lens. It's so tiny, especially if you take the lens hood off and it just feels right on the Leica M body. Okay, so that's the optical performance and characteristics and use cases for these lenses. What about their fit and finish and how does it feel to handle each of these lenses? Well, obviously the Sumlux is the largest and bulkiest and heaviest of them all. Well, it's um, actually approaching the size and weight of a 50mm f1.2 Noctilux. Well, it might actually weigh a little bit more holding in my hand. So on a Leica M body, it definitely feels a little bit more front heavy and uh, you're probably gonna feel that in balancing your hand. And of course, with this um, bigger hood and longer body, you're gonna get some uh, unavoidable viewfinder blockage, but that has never been too big of an issue for me. And build and finish wise, it's top notch. Both the aperture ring and focus ring feels every bit as good as any other like lenses. So yeah, if you don't mind the big size and if you really like its unique rendering, then definitely consider this lens. I would say it creates the most atmospheric photos out of all these lenses. No question about it. So next one, the 28mm Summicron. It's still hefty in your hand, even though it is a little bit larger than the 35 f2, but still it balances really well on the M body. And I wouldn't consider size and weight a problem with this lens. And so, yeah, if you do not need the f1.4 aperture, but you still occasionally need a little bit more separation and low light shooting capabilities, this is also a lens to consider. And especially if you can only have 128 mil, yeah, this is the um, Jack of all trades lens for you right here. Okay, so now the 28 mil Almeret, it is definitely the lightest, the smallest, the cutest of the bunch if you put it on an M body and take off the lens hood. There's actually almost no viewfinder blockage. It just feels great in your hand. It is quite a bit cheaper than the Summicron, but the build quality feels every bit as good as the Summicron and the Summilux. So yeah, if uh, you're under budget and if you don't care too much about shooting in the dark or subject separation, and if your use case is mostly street photography, then 100% this is a must own lens for any Leica shooters. Okay, so last but not least here is the 28mm Sumron. This lens, it's made out of brass. It feels really hefty in your hand, even though it is tiny. I would say half of its value is actually the design and fit and finish, right? If you put it on a silver or even safari like an M body, it just looks stunning. Um, even though handling wise, it's not the most ergonomic lens, but it's not bad at all. And especially with this very low profile, you can actually make your M body sort of pocketable. Uh, which is its very own special feat. So yeah, if uh, you've already owned like a 28mm or 28mm is not your main focal length and if you would only use it occasionally, maybe you should also consider this Sumeron. So that's it for the comparison and review of these four amazing like a 28mm lenses and I hope this video is helpful. If you like like cameras and lenses and if you're looking forward to more reviews like this one, then definitely consider subscribe to my channel. In the next few weeks, I will keep pushing out new lens review videos just like this one. And I hope these videos can help you to make your lens purchase decisions. All right, so that's it for today's video. I'll see you in the next one.